Okay, should we uh, a couple of people have to leave? people have to leave because of husband's birthdays and other important things like that. So uh, maybe we can begin. Um, and the, uh, anyone want to add anything or subtract anything from the agenda? And uh, you'll notice that the, can you just update me a bit on the $5,000 from Alan Beasley's wife? Is, he, is they waiting to hear uh, what we're going to do? Is that what they? No, basically she's happy with where it's at okay. with the last communication from her and um, off Radcliffe Lane. So the next step is Lauren is talking to the Radcliffe Lane neighbors around that area okay. to inform them. And Jack Cyrus, the gentleman that came here. Yes, he is the guy who started the Yes, idea. he's working with um, the <coughs> university to come up with the verbiage that would go on the signage. So I guess we're just moving along now. Okay. It'd be a bit before the project's done. Well, I had something else to say about it, but we'll say about and it. And 2000's coming from this committee, right? When we get to it right? on the agenda. Pardon? 2000's coming from 2000's this committee. So coming we have, from here. And then we're all still pers also pursuing some money from Rotary, but... How is it? voting on that right now, as a matter of fact. Oh, are they? Oh, well, yeah, there's right a now, board meeting. Run out. Okay. Hi, so Jen. Leaving. How are you? Good, good. Okay. Uh, somebody move approval of the minutes. Seconded by, all in favor, opposed, Carry. all right. So we have with us tonight uh, the author of the uh, Active Transportation Plan. I don't know whether you've all met him before, but um, uh, Daniel Casey is the guy, and here he is. Yeah, I don't know if you know everybody around the room. I think I might have met everyone that was at a previous meeting, probably two months ago. Okay. Right. All right. Yeah, so, is there any opening marks you wanted to make, or do you want to just deal with questions? Um, no, nothing, nothing specific, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Now, the guy that uh, was really enthused on meeting you is back in Boston, looking after his sick daughter. That's the mayor. Okay. So, uh, anyway, can we have questions? Now, you're bound to have a question. Yeah, I thought there was going to be a bit of a presentation, actually. Well, and, uh, yeah. And just kind of a little bit of an overview. We can do and that. And I'd particularly like to hear, uh, uh, I mean, I know it's our job to prioritize. And uh, we can see certain low-hanging fruit there that's uh, not uh, really, really cost us uh, very much to do. Um, and at some point, we're going to get, uh, obviously, some numbers put next to some of these. but. I'd just like to hear from you in terms of how you think, uh, first of all, the timeline that this might take to uh, kind of roll out. Mm -hmm. And if you were to kind of uh, give your ideas in terms of the priorities, it would yeah. kind of um, focus us a little bit. Uh, I guess in terms of, so you're absolutely right, there's there's the, the stuff that could be the, the quick hitters, the easy wins, and there's some stuff you're going to have to keep putting money aside to, to take yeah. a little so I wouldn't lose track of the fact that the infrastructure is, is very, very, very important. That's the stuff that's, that's costly. So building bike routes, building um, new facilities to accommodate um, pedestrians and, and cyclists, that stuff's going to be very expensive. Don't lose track of those. Keep putting your money in place to, to be able to make those happen over time. Uh, but shorter term, you're right, there are some very simple things you can do to start kind of building the infra. Uh, I, I would say uh, this whole idea of, of uh, branding, making information, information available, uh, route maps, schedules, um, uh, maybe uh, like the web-based stuff we talked about, some of the print materials, a lot of that stuff can, could be done within the next year. 
lot of the information already exists. It's just not that easily available to people or convenient to people. So, my personal opinion is that's your, that's your, that's your biggest key in short term could could be realized through that. I think a lot of the, the once that stuff's out there, that should generate some enthusiasm and some momentum um, in this sense, and hopefully that starts driving sort of the, the impetus from from your community and from your council. Um, to, to, to move on with some of the some of the bigger ticket items. So I'd I'd encourage you to, to really really work away at the the information and the marketing and just kind of the really quite easy stuff. One of the things that when we talked before that I was I was enthused about was when it talks about creating a logo and creating an image and I was kind of interested in doing something kind of unique for Obey like we created the logo for the centennial and we did all that. Doing that, however, sort of conflicts with the logic of having standard signs. But could you just talk a little, is there any reason why we couldn't have both? Um, I guess when we talk about this branding image logo type thing, we don't just mean signage. There's a lot uh, just in your print material and your web and your, in your, in your advertising. Um, so kind of getting that consistent across, I guess, many avenues, one being some kind of signage system. Um, it, it does conflict with, with standards on signage in certain cases, but in other cases it doesn't. So roadway signage, um, uh, some of the legal signage won't permit you to slap a big, you know, happy cyclist emblem on it. But other stuff like directional signage, uh, identification signage, the, the stuff that's not quite so official, um, you, you can integrate some of that stuff. Yeah, I, I know they've done some interesting signage, I think, in uh, Simple sanity to the blueberry country where it says slow down and smell the plants growing or something. You know, yeah. it just struck me that this was something that could be a little bit unique for for Obey and yeah. and bring a little uh, enthusiasm to motorcycle. You know, cars and bikes get along and you know trust each other and whatever and whatever it's all about. Maybe have a contest or something for the best uh, for the best sign. Hazel's looking at me well, like I'm, I'm out of my mind. But no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just wondering about um, some of the, uh, the CRD transportation plan. Yeah. And they actually have, I think, a, a branding within their plan. Yeah, they do. Right. So I'm just wondering how we would integrate that. Yeah. Well, that was really my question. Yeah. Was, yeah. Yeah. But you're saying it's doable as long as you kind of don't lose track of the, the basic elements of, For the, sure. of the CRD plan. Yeah, and there's certain things your, your engineering department's going to want to be involved in as well. There yeah. probably no go as far as tinkering with standards on signage yeah. and paint markings and, and things like that. But there are other elements um, in the CRD's plan. I, I would suggest in all cases being consistent. I think that's one of the big issues in Greater Victoria is lack of consistency. And I think that's what the point of the regional plan is. So in terms of a lot of the some of the signage, it would be great to be consistent. But I, I still think across like we've kind of narrowed into signage here, but across all kind of spectrums again with the print media, the, the web stuff. Uh, developing a, a brand identity um, and really pushing that out of, into your community, the Oak Bay community. It was um, at the, the technical advisory committee for the Pastor and Cycling Master Plan. Um, they had an, uh, a session dedicated only to signage. So that might be, I don't know what the, I haven't seen the minutes from that. I know they're somewhere around. So that might be something we might want to look at because there was a lot of discussion at that meeting about the ability for municipalities to brand signs within a consistent framework. Mm -hmm. So they look the same, but you know where you are based on you know a little logo. Yeah. Um, or that's like the West Shore brands, their their road signs. Yeah. You notice they all have a little logo for them. You see some examples of what people have done on page 45, which is kind of people's unique uh, unique sign, including one I see from Langford. Hmm? That's uh, I believe uh, different it's Langford. It's the uh, no, so that little uh, circular emblem at the sort of top center of all those logos, that's actually what they have stamped uh, most entrances to their bike network. So any bike lane you enter off of uh, any significant side road, that will be stamped right on the bike lane, followed by the diamond and the, and the, uh, okay. the bike the stencil. Yeah. Yeah. Is your plan to be a kind of a regional coordinating committee? Because when it comes to signage and, and like for instance the box, painting the box uh, as an example, I noticed this was some tangential, but I noticed that the Victoria has gone from blue to green, which I think is in keeping with what they're doing in other communities. It seems to be they're standardizing. 
is there uh, some regional level, I don't know, maybe you know, Corey, where yes. there is the kind of a coordinating because uh, of, you know, signage and, and because when you think about signage, the branding is, is not a big issue. It's, it's the safety uh, and it's also, uh, you know, recognition when you what you're looking for. Uh, if you're looking always for the same directional sign, regardless of community, it's easier to find, right, visually. Whereas so you don't really need to worry too much about the branding on the website because uh, it's a different format. But I don't know if I know from speaking with Sue Hallett, the planner at CRD, she, so the, the, the system advisory committee, which I sat on, and the technical advisory committee, which Richard sat on, both of which wrapped up when the PCMP was done. Um, and I know she is looking to reform those. And right now, I believe she's going out talking to various municipalities about that process and how it looks. So as of, as of right now, I believe there is none currently at the CRD level, but that is something they are looking at. Is that that's something, uh, John, that you, you know, this committee might want to encourage, that there, uh, you know, for safety and uh, efficiency, that there be kind of a regional coordinating body, and then we can look at branding locally. Uh, Maybe. I think there has to be both. I mean, maybe maybe the kind of signs I'm talking about just need to be where you enter Bay or something like that. I don't know. Maybe, yeah. and maybe it's too difficult to combine the, you know, the standard sign with with what I would say is kind of a unique, probably humorous Oak Bay sign. But uh, but uh, <coughs> it, it, I got another I have another area. Go ahead. In that sense, I don't know if you were finished. Were you yeah. In terms, yeah. The, the other is uh, you could speak to kind of the prioritizing and um, in terms of connection with the regional mm -hmm. and networks because that's something that we've heard from Sue Hallett and that kind of more regional view of it and mm -hmm. what importance do you put on that in terms of priority uh, do you see what hurdles do you see what barriers do you see to us uh, coordinating um, I guess what you're getting at is do you so you're dealing with at least on your borders you're dealing with sandwich and you're dealing more so with city and it's kind of like a, do you drive them or do they drive you or is it a combination thereof in terms of you've now got a set of uh, routes that you want to develop over, over, over time in the future. And should you be knocking on City of Victoria's door and saying we're doing 1, 2, 3 in 2012, 14, and 16 and hope that they'll jump on board or, or react to what they're doing? I, I don't think it's going to quite know. Isn't that one of the things though that we talked about that that was one of the pet peeves, John and I had it, the concern about you're going to have bike lanes up to the city That's of Victoria right, yeah. and then there's nothing. Yeah. And it just makes it look like we're not coordinated as a region. And that's what we talked about that and said, so, you know, somehow there doesn't seem to be any regional committee that's saying, okay, well, we're res I'm responsible for this project in the city. What are you guys doing first? Because it makes sort of sense to coordinate if we're going to do Oak Bay first, they do the other part of Oak Bay, if indeed they're thinking yeah. of it at all. I don't know, and I got a sense from you, we don't really know, and I don't think there's anybody coordinating that. No, it would be up to us to contact them. What, what we have done with the, the network that's been developed that's in here, it is consistent with your neighboring municipalities network. So you've got routes that are, once they're developed, are going to connect. But they're not developed yet. But we don't, we don't really. And they haven't necessarily agreed they would develop. Well, yeah. CRDs have said yeah. that these are just like they've said, Obey Avenue. But if the citizens of Obey decide they yeah. didn't want to do it, yeah. like that's the other piece. Yeah. And there's no lanes on the other side of yeah, Obey. Yeah, like you know. And the other one, like we put tricky. a bike lane in on Cedar Hill Crossroad from the university to Gordon Head Road, and then when you get to Gordon Head Road, you do 20 feet and the bike lane disappears mm -hmm. in, I guess, in Saanich, yeah. and they've come up with a new route now where they're going to go along, what is it, Mortimer or something, which goes into the mm -hmm. side entrance mm -hmm. of Uvic, which mm -hmm. makes a hell of a lot more sense because mm -hmm. it's flat, yes. you know, so. This sort of leads into a uh, question I was going to ask, actually, and that is the recommendation for a transportation planner. And yeah. you mentioned committee, but should it be a a planner's a a staff uh, um, coordination um, set up. And I think that's what they think, the CRD is. That's the word that seems to get confused. Because I think that's regionally, if, if you were to say we need a regional planner, somebody would say, wouldn't they say, well, isn't that what the CRD is supposed to be doing? And yet the CRD makes the plans, but 
that where none of us are bound by what they think. I don't know. I find that all very confusing. Is it this because it was, maybe it's in terms of an action item uh, where we take that issue? Because I think that's a key issue. Because I used to come up Cedar Hill Cross from Saanich and then it stops. Yeah. Now it keeps going. Yeah. On, the, on, the so, on the south on the south side it does. Yeah. yeah oh, the both south sides. Side. Side. Yeah, both yeah. sides it does. Yeah. So I'm wondering in terms of how we can take it from here and. and and I don't want to impose upon staff too much, but this may be something that staff to staff discussions could assist with. In other words, if uh, Richard would, you know, if there's a little group between uh, Victoria, uh, you know, an engineer there or someone there who's kind of, whose job it is to look after the bike infrastructure mm -hmm. in the same sanity, between the three, at least as a start, they may be able to come up with some recommendations and how to coordinate, because I'm sure you coordinate now in terms of blacktop, right? Uh, and, and traffic lights and stuff. So it's not, not nothing mm -hmm. foreign to us mm -hmm. that we can't coordinate. So may, maybe if, if we can do suggest that the staff do that, mm -hmm. come back with some kind of idea of how to start thinking, the, the, the framework mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. coordination. It seemed to me, I don't disagree with you, but it seemed to me that probably the first you know, we probably need to cost some of these things, and then we need to uh, make sure they're all fit into the rules of width and all the rest of this stuff, and and then maybe prior prioritize a, a number of them, and then at that point, I would agree with you. I think it'd be very useful to uh, to look at that. I mean, we're talking. One of the things we're talking about in here is is working with UVic to put a trail. Mm -hmm. on the on the mm -hmm. north side of mm -hmm. City Hill Crossroad, which I think makes a lot of sense. Uh, it makes a lot of sense if you're going to the university. If you're going straight through, it gets a bit confusing because the trail, the bike lane disappears on the, on the north side of the hill. You know, it's, it's not terribly but consistent. And once you get to the bottom, if you're using that as a route, I don't think there's any lanes as you go on on Cedar Hill Crossroad at all, you know. But what about, uh, and I appreciate what you're saying, but wouldn't it be wise to double track? In other words, start them both. And, and this is why I would say that. Because if at the staff level, uh, let's assume we have uh, a priority A, B, and C, and uh, Victoria has X, Y, and C, and Sandwich has A, B, and X, or whatever. I think our priorities, to some extent, uh, I think need to be driven by the priorities of the others. In other words, we could reorient our priorities, you know, depending on the cost. Are they driven stuff. by ours? Well, well, it has this? to be coordinated on that, I think, and that's yeah. why if you do it at the same time, and then and then they come together. There's, there's there's certainly a number of things that relate to them, but for example, probably the scenic bike route and the neighborhood bike routes, they don't even touch oh, the other exactly. municipalities. Yeah. You know, they're yep. just they're mainly signage. Sorry, well, that gets to my point because there's a lot of talk here about uh, the issues of coordinating with uh, other municipalities. But I would say that you know there's fundamentally two questions. One is making it so we have movement within Oak Bay. So how do we move around within Oak Bay? And secondly, how do you get in and out? And if if we focused on developing within Oak Bay. It's fairly simple then when somebody else figures out what they want to do to be able to add in an entrance. Yeah. But if we already had the infrastructure within Oak Bay, then, th then that would be 90% of it. Yeah, and, and a lot of the stuff which is in Oak Bay is probably, the, the, what's your expression? The hanging fruit. But it's probably pretty simple to do, much of it. You know. I think, I mean, at the, at the end of the day, you know, I, I know that they, like Sue has been presenting to councils right now, like as of like by this week, she went to Saanich on Wednesday, I think. So last Wednesday. So, you know, I think one of the things we could do as a committee is ask our council, ask Oak Bay Council to write to the CRD and say, we strongly support the recommendation of reforming the technical advisory committee to form a coordinating body at the staff level, because that's what the technical advisory committee was, was staff from all these, exactly what Nils was talking about, but beyond just City of Victoria and us and Saanich. So, and if that fails, then we can see if we can go to the next step, which is just sitting down with Saanich and City of Victoria. Will you put that in the minutes, Manny? So but as well as finding a way to coordinate between all these different uh, political groups or the districts, we also have to come up with a way to take the recommendations and turn them into implementations. Mm -hmm. That yeah. involves 
some sort of plan. And that involves, I think, to make the plan, I think you have to price it out. That's right. But you also have to look at other aspects, like which takes the most time, which is the easy fruit. And if we had some means as a committee, or perhaps yourself, I'm not sure what your mandate is, and, and now that you've done the report, to go through the recommendations and say, these ones are easy to do, these, one, these ones um, um, are, um, take, will take a little time, these ones are inexpensive, these ones are more expensive. I think that that's going to be up to us to figure out. Well, that, that, that seems, seems to be the first step, because yeah. going through the material and doing, and doing that with the material, sort of criteriaizing it, if you like, can then easily lead to the creation of a, of a timeline and a plan. Well, that's you know, really that what... That dovetail into the coordination that we're talking yeah. about. That's and, and the process. So yeah. It comes back again to staff. Who's going to be doing that? If yeah. it's done in committee, uh, it'll take forever. But Recommendations are good, but we need to have a plan to implement them and a way to, to prioritize them. So if you look at what council said, you know, council, that's basically what council said is let's get engineering to look at the feasibility of these. Are they all feasible? What are the costs of them? And then we can start to prioritize them. We can decide which ones can be done soon, which ones can't be done soon. So we'll get a report back from the engineering. Well, the only thing that engineering did but ask, though, sorry to interrupt. I, I think one of the things we probably should do for engineering and, and the costing side is not ask them to do every one because they have they, they, they have their day job too. And so if we if we went through and and picked, you know, half a dozen as a starting point, then we could, that could be our first thrust. And uh, you know, I think that would be my suggestion. Hazel. I, I actually want to talk a little bit about the, the um, grants that you have listed in here as well. Because, I mean, is there any of these that are, are much more uh, accessible than others, or are they for... Uh, well, uh, you guys probably know the, the deal with the gas tax. Mm -hmm. um, I should mention that at UBCM, the Premier announced $30 million for recreation, and she actually talked about bike lanes. Mm -hmm. Lorna has been watching the website hourly, and... Mandy has been. Mandy has been watching <laughs> it. I talked to Ida Chung about it. And, you know, apparently the Premier, one minute it's going to be only, only municipalities smaller than 15,000. The next time it's going to be all municipalities. The next time it's going to be something else. So it's government at its finest. It's kind of going around in circles, but it's going to land one of these days. And that's why we probably need to get going and cost a few things out so we can send in a thing and say, this. send in an application and say, this is what we want to do. I'm just wondering, in your experience, yeah. any of that um, that more accessible than others? The list that made the report here, we had a list of about four times the size, and they're constantly revolving and being dying. out of date and you know, dying and yeah. being born again. <laughs> so uh, I, I hope these still exist. <laughs> but no matter what they are, you've got to have a costed project. Yes, exactly. Yeah. You know, there's no sense sending it in and say, tell me 10 grand and I'll just spend it on something good. Yeah. It doesn't work that way. In a perfect world, it would, but okay. so, so do we, I, I'm, I'm conscious of Daniel's time, so if, could we concentrate on issues that Daniel can help us with and then we yeah. can let him slip away? Yeah, because when it really comes to the, the cost of Daniel, have you kind of have kind of a rough eye ballpark figure or are you just... Um, we have typical costs that we'd use for a order of magnitude costing that would do it per kilometer, per meter, per hundred meters mm -hmm. that could be applied to any of these and it would more just uh, for all the ones that involve bike lanes, it would just be however long the route is. Yes. Um, there would be a linear cost of like the length of that route. Yeah. That kind of that stuff. That really costing really work. wasn't part of your... Uh, it wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't well, part of his mandate. I, I think in terms of how we might, the next steps, if you will, if you will uh, it may be that we get rough costing. In other words, kind of order of magnitude, uh, which would allow us to more easily to prioritize. I agree with you. Right. In other words, I think to cost it down to the, the square foot and stuff is going to take some time. But I think a rough kind of cost estimate, and then coming back here and looking at, okay, so this is the 200000 this is the 5000 okay, and it allow this committee to more easily say, okay, this is the order we'd like to think about and, and present that to council. It's just a, again, it gets just a No, I, I think that's, that's fair ball, I, and, and I don't think we can do that. Uh, instantly, but I, I think maybe if we took that away from this meeting and uh, and then uh, had everybody kind of come back and give us a list of their, you know, the top ten list or something, that would give us a start, and then we could move from there at another meeting. But I, 
I, I think, you know, I, my own opinion is this north-south, I can't remember what you call it. Um, Central Bay Bikeway, is that the one you're talking about? The, uh, the one that just goes... Um, no, no, the one that goes from Beach Drive in the south to, uh, to up to Beach Drive, up to almost at the north gates, and just goes, you know, it's called a neighborhood uh, neighborhood bike rate. I mean, that could be done just with signage and with some directional signs and, uh, and not much more, right? Yeah, I mean, you might want a plan in place to work towards over time, but we're not talking about striping the whole thing with bike lanes. No, no. Well, it, it, it wouldn't fit, but, and then the scenic bike route uh, is one which is really so narrow that most of it you can't do much. Some of it you can, yeah. and that could be done fairly quickly. Um, so it's more the it's more the uh, commuter bike routes that, that are going to be a little more awkward because there are some that are going to be affected by events like Hope Bay Lodge and Hope Bay High and a whole bunch of things like that, which are going to kind of come out in the middle of them all. So. There's a couple under five and six that aren't actually items that are going to cost a whole bunch of money. Five and six on what page? Uh, the, the at the very yeah. end, the recommendations, 5.3a, established by parking requirements, um, established 6.1a and b and c. Um, those four items don't actually cost anything, so the discussion is do we want them? And then 5.3b, increased public bike racks, that would require a budget item, so that's kind I'm of... I'm sorry, 5.6, bus stop amenity? No, 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 no. The ones before I'm that. Sorry? 5.3a. 5.3a, oh, I see. And 5.3b, the bike racks? Yeah, so the bike yeah. racks, we should... Um, I, I know I had a discussion with the city of Victoria engineer who's in charge of their, um, not their bike racks that are installed by them, but the ones that they do the cost sharing with the local um, uh, with the local businesses. What it does is the business purchases the rack and the city of Victoria pays for the installation costs and they have a whole criteria for um, where that gets installed. There's, you know, has to be a certain distance away from a whole bunch of things and uh, those, those kinds of things. Um, so maybe that, under that one, that would be something that our staff could talk to their staff and get that sure. information from them. How many bike racks? I gave. I passed this around that I hadn't really seen. How many bike racks? Five hundred and thirteen in the municipality. Five hundred and thirteen, and they only count the hooped ones as one, even though you can put one on each side. So, uh, and Richard, I can get you that name. Thank you. Yeah. Richard, no, that's. Would you be working with other municipalities on perhaps some something similar to this? Have you any? I'm, I'm quite concerned uh, that we set up a good decision-making process here. Could we? could be a very tortuous process unless we get it well organized. Um, do you have any recommendations on, on the way other municipalities might have gone about uh, that, um, deciding whether this is a higher priority than that one because uh, it's going to serve more uses or that is not going to cost so much so we're going to do that first? Yeah. Um, uh, a lot of places frankly just do it anecdotally. Uh, it's kind of uh, off the top. They look at them and decide which ones they want to do based on the budget they have available. They being a well, committee like this one oh, or a staff um, position? Or uh, typically the staff would develop staff. recommendations and, right. and, uh, and, and take it to council. Yeah. Um, sometimes they'll get more more uh, sophisticated with it and, and relative to cost, uh, look at the benefit, which can be uh, broken down a number of different ways, mm -hmm. sort of new bike trips induced, um, uh, safety issues, if there's no safety issues at it. Certain area, um, all sorts of stuff like that. But I, I would, I don't think you need to be looking at that in this case. The by and large, has come from staff made recommendations yeah. either to council or to a committee like this one. Yeah. 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 We talked about priorizing and talked about budgeting and, and all of that, but and, and having us respond and maybe making a list of the ten things we think we most need to do. Yeah. And all of that, but I'm also wondering how we would include uh, public involvement in this. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that as one of the recommendations at that stage. Yeah. Does it make sense to do that? Yeah, um, that's. A, I mean, that's a really good question. Um, typically, when we develop a plan like this, um, there will be community involvement somewhere within it. Often for a kind of info gathering, and then later on as a check back with a with a draft to say, you know, it, here it is. If it's perfect, then it's final. If not, then we've got some rework to do. That didn't occur here. So 
really it's, it's something it's, we need to do. It's up to you guys, but I, I do think it would be wise to, to get the community involved rather than. What I'm asking is what stage? I mean, is it about. I mean, it's pretty hard to get to the community the involved when we don't know the to cost. Mm -hmm. Responding to the report itself or, or uh, responding to a, a tentative plan that we come up with, and what would be a good point to involve the public? Yeah, this idea of coming up with 10, 10 directions, 10 actions you're going to take over the next, let's call it three years or whatever, that might be um, something you want to take forward for some input on. Uh, Priority, which one is actually the most, most beneficial? If you're going to talk about big ticket uh, infrastructure pieces, you might get their involvement there as well, um, rather than trying to kind of make a priority judgment to be close doors. We got one door open. <laughs> so, in, but in terms of timing, infrastructure stuff would need to happen before the budget gets set for next for 2012. So. That we need to know the cost of what we were proposing yeah, so we need to cost, do. then we could go to the community, then get their plan, and then we could get it into the budget for 2020. Well, even if even if we even if we didn't hadn't gone to the public yet, we could put money in the budget based on something, and based on the estimated cost, because you know the, the budget papers are being gathered as that's we right speak. Right now. Yeah. And so um, there's a little time. You're not yeah, going to have time that. to go through the whole public process to make it. But so John's suggestion, you might uh, if we can get maybe some estimates and just put something in yeah. so there's something there and you can fine tune it next year at yeah. final. And we can also be keeping our eye open for grants when the premier decides to finally land mm -hmm. on what are thirty million dollars mm -hmm. is all about. Mm -hmm. I just think it's important for the committee to as well as doing sort of creating a plan and, and all that to keep in mind how to involve the public in this since it does involve the whole community one way or another. No, I agree with you. Yeah. It's on the website now. And so it's there for people to look at. But then I agree with you. I think once we get, once maybe we get our top ten list, I think then we, you know, then and some costing, then I think it would be great to take it to the public and have a few public meetings. But you made the comment that you have estimates for how much it costs to put in a pipeline on the or pipeline. Sorry, <laughs> there's my bad. That's for the <laughs> <laughs> To put in a bike lane yeah. on a belt road or to start one from scratch. Yeah. So I'm wondering why with these projects, you've got a fairly good idea, I would think, between everyone here of how far these distances are. Why not just take well, their I guess it's I guess it's signage, whether we need to make any changues to the road surface. I mean, but we we're know we're just it talking estimates at this yeah. point. So if I mean, we know it costs. Uh, to do that and we didn't ask them to do that. I know what I'm saying is we have the, uh, the suggestions here. We also have the cost per kilometer of various types of things in, in general areas. To me, to come up with an initial estimate of these is pretty simple. Well, but we know it, we know it we know it costs uh, I think three hundred and seventy five dollars uh, a kilometer times two to put in a bike lane and you have to do that every year to paint it. We know that kind of thing. We don't know the signage, we don't know the other stuff. But you're right, you can have a ballpark figure. And I should point out that this gentleman's contract is now finished really. So we're not I know but I'm going back to just to get estimates for different things. If you're putting a bike line on an established road versus building one on the side, I'm assuming you have some CAN numbers. Yeah, well, their engineering staff does anyway. Yeah. So yeah, so yeah. Is that something you could just? Send oh, I could provide some direction. Okay. Just let you know where That'd be great. Where to, where to look. So, in order to, uh, so is is everybody in agreement that maybe for the, for the next meeting we come with our top ten list and that, or we send it to Mandy and Mandy filters it down hopefully into a meaningful, uh, into a meaningful list and we then thrash that out and and, uh, and put it together into something which uh, we can either use these can numbers or we can use I mean one of the other things I'm concerned about is we have we have some roads in Oak Bay that are don't meet the criteria for width and that kind of thing which which engineering needs to be satisfied with and um, you know which is uh, uh, which we need to fit into the process as well and uh, but if we did that, would that meet Can everybody's test? Is that the way to go? I mean, uh, I'm everyone I'm come up with a top ten list, or what about the staff? Another alternative is for the staff to come up and say, this is our recommendation. Well, why don't we well, do I both? I thought we were asking for ballpark figures. I'm lost now. All right. I thought we were asking for ballpark figures first from engineering. That was first. But that then was going to be for everything? For, that's what I thought you guys came to in the end. Just ballpark. 
But I, I thought we were in agreement. Well, it wasn't, yeah, I, I don't know. I thought we were in agreement that we were. I just want to be clear. Staff is a little reluctant to have the entire engineering were, department working full time on this issue. So how long would it take just to give again a rough estimate? No, no detailed estimate. Oh, it would take uh, a couple weeks, I think, uh, based on other, st other things. I think. What what we could have then uh, to combine the two, if, if you could then release them the committee in a couple of weeks and then we could take those mm -hmm. and then come back with our 10 top. That's so we so would have so some nice. order of magnitude, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, to refine the top 10 process a bit, I mean, looking at the uh, last section on implementation to summary of actions, the actions are divided into different categories. Mm -hmm. So one of the questions in my mind is, do we pick one of the new 4D, 5C things, or do we look at prioritizing all the things within the section? You know, if we if, if if we prioritize within each section, within the, the top number yeah. would obviously yeah. come up. Yeah. So then you'd have number one for pedestrian mm -hmm. for among the committee, mm -hmm. or whoever. Mm -hmm. Number two from all, or number one from all team trails, and so on. And it would maybe even become clear um, which of these categories are the most important, as well as which item within the category is most important. Well, uh, I would assume the neighborhood bike lanes would probably be the easiest and the simplest of the infrastructure yeah. pieces. Yeah. Yeah. And it may be we went and asking people what's more important, pedestrian networks or multi-use traffic is one way to do it. Or what's more important within those things. The problem is is if you have two pedestrian networks that each cost five thousand and one walkway that costs a hundred thousand, you might as well do the two for five thousand that you can do in a week versus so you kind of obvious. Have to, you have to yeah, you kinda of have to look at them all. So the danger is we come up with ten different lifts that are totally different. But I don't think we would. Or you decide that all the very glamorous, really, really expensive ticket items are the most important, and then you don't get anything you can actually do right away. It'd be nice to do something right away, mm -hmm. I would think. I would guess that at that point we would have a conversation where that would occur. With who? With who? When we get to the point where we, that conversation would occur. I mean, if we ended up having a whole bunch of glamorous high ticket items and nothing else, but we would sit down and say, well, that's not acceptable. We have to do something else. Yeah. So we would do that as a committee. So in my hearing, what was, just to recap, so I can give some direction to Mandy and probably be talking to Richard and Dave, is that we'll ask them to just ballpark the items in the recommendations. If they can do that within two weeks and send the information to like out to uh, to all of us, then we would look at them in each category, kind of prioritize prioritize in each category, and then what would you want to do? Would you want to send that your priorities, Mandy, and we compile something for a meeting? That's what I was thinking. Or, or the other way you could do is if, if if we had that sent out where you had it like this plus the costing and you came with it, what if we had each section blown up on a big sheet and you just come up with your, you throw it as a sticker and you put up your priorities and democracy. No, no, no it's, it's good. Visual. <laughs> yeah, it, it's It's good. just nice to have it all, all done. done. Okay. And so yeah. that, it, you know, because of you know, time. It's, it's just, just we normally don't it. have long meetings. Meeting. We have mm -hmm. like an hour something meeting. So we need a process where there's some chance mm -hmm. of, uh, I mean, maybe what we could do, Mandy, is when you get them all, you can, uh, you can sort of prepare a document of them and send them back out so people can so see people can are. see this is an yeah. yeah. we'd be able to markable literally a markable document that people can check and what to people five, you know. And mm -hmm. yeah. I think then if it comes back out and everybody knows, okay, this is the priorities of the committee, you know, we may surprise ourselves and we're all on the same page that it'll be helpful or if we're not it make people reconsider things. Go for it. I don't know. I, I it would also be, be nice to sort of have some idea of what kind of figure would be reasonable to, to have for next year's budget. Uh, well, that's going to help us, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are we talking about 100,000 or are we talking about half a million? No. Yeah. Well, we're not talking about half a million. No. Probably, <laughs> not. <laughs> sure Probably not. not. But if something was really a priority, mm -hmm. then that's what you'd be pushing for if it was a higher ticket item. That's yeah. really what everyone felt strongly no, about. Mm -hmm. Just, uh, in, in my, I think obviously we're kind of uh, kind of reaching some consensus as to the process but I just want to come back to the public consultation element um, because we don't want to go too far down this road uh, 
uh, without bringing the public with us, right? We don't want to be in a position where this committee is already established, you know, this is the top ten, you know, like put all our things together and this is kind of what we're going to do. And what do you think about that public? Because there may be a sense of, well, it sounds like the decision's already been made. Right? Yeah, the, tr um, the trouble is if we send this all out, it's almost an issue that's too big for the public to say, okay, where do you start and what do you do? I mean, I think there's a there's a benefit in what we're proposing and there's a danger, I accept that. But I think what we can do, um, and I don't quite know how to do this, it's going to be on our website now. It is on the it's website, on there, I understand, yeah. right? Somehow try to solicit or, or get people actually to um, to react to it. In other words, uh, put out a, uh, a request, uh, you know, and we can turn to cycling groups and community associations. What do you think of this? In other words, try to, at the same time as we're moving forward, bring the kind of public with us. Maybe I could ask the editor of the OK News to, you know, Vivian did a little story before. Yeah. Vivian's off sick again. And, um, but maybe I'll ask uh, Dawn to uh, see if he could put a little blurb in to say it's on and we'd welcome Any comments? We'd welcome comments. Yeah, but I, I think probably has to do more than, and I, I think it's a good idea, but I would think it would be more than this. For this committee is opening it up. Okay, so, you know, bring us your comments. And it could be publicized through the OK News, but it really should think be seen that we're no, no, soliciting I, views. No, 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 that's do, fine. Do you want just open comments, just, or do you want to do like a survey monkey or something where you're actually, you know, trying to solicit actual yeah. impact? We could yeah. have that on the municipal website if you had actual questions relating to that. I don't know. One of the problems, though, that always concerns me about just opening up without going with the plan now is the things that I have seen in this municipality being difficult and handwork is when poor Dave Thompson went to the public and said, anything is possible. Here you go. And and, and, it, and it really does. And then there's a, and they go, well, why can't this happen? And, what? and then they get all upset. The most successes have been when we've gone out with the Windsor plan, with the NLC, yeah. you know, with, with the Opey Rec Center plan. And that wasn't to say it was a done deal, because I remember the Opey Rec Center plan. One of the things we didn't have was the steam room. And we heard it loud and clear from the early birders at the open houses. We want a steam room. <laughs> Egg and I talk is you better get a steam room. And we and that came from them. But yeah. y you know, but if you don't go with some parameters, people have no idea about costs, and then they and it gets really off track on really what. I mean, there's still going to be a lot of decisions because I think some of what the public can decide is what's more important to you: multi-use trails, pedestrian trails, bike trails. These are what they're. You know, and we might prioritize some of this and say, so here are some other things that were raised and the consultants found, but... But, but I mean we need to make clear that if we pick our top have, ten yeah. or whatever it is, that this doesn't mean we're casting aside all yeah. the rest of them. This means so this, is this, what is, we're thinking. this is the beginning. Yeah. So you don't think this is enough of a cohesive plan to consult on yet? Is that what you're saying? Well, I, I, think we, I, I think it's just too big without having prices and, oh, yeah. and, and yeah, some more that. thought about it. You know, because the other thing that I think we need to do is the whole, some of the things that might influence how we approach this is the regional approach. So going back to what you guys were talking about earlier and, and what Audrey was saying down there, it may be that the other municipalities are not prepared to do anything with those big regional plans and the, and the and and coming down Oak Bay Avenue, and that's not going to happen for two years from now from their perspective. Well, so maybe we do need to focus on the internal plan, but until we know that knowledge and we can tell the public that they're going to make a decision on something that they don't have all the information, and so then you're going to end up with a bike lane to the end of Fall Bay, and it won't go any further to, for another three years, because. We, we don't know that until we talk to them. I'm going to disagree with that statement because I was heavily involved in the Citizen Advisory Committee for Pedestrian and Cycling Mass Month, CRD level. So, and that committee fluctuated members anywhere between 10 and 25, depending on the meeting. And we had upwards of a, almost a dozen meetings over the course of three years, mm -hmm. two years on that plan. And so the citizens were involved really early on. and. You know, before any pricing came out, before the, before even a route map was out, like it was, the, it was at the very beginning there was just discussions 
in order to about what the heck the plan was going to look like in the first place. So, uh, you know, I, I, I understand the sentiment that possibly people are going to raise expectations, but I think I, I'm more worried, I'm more with Nils, and I'm worried that if we don't go out early, we're going to get, you know, I've already had comments from people that I know that I've talked to about this, that, you know, where's the community consultation? Why hasn't this been brought forward? Why wasn't it part of what Boulevard did? Why didn't they come forward and have some community meetings? So there's, so there's already some, um, I've already heard that from the community, that, you know, it's nice that this is out, but, you know, we want to talk to you about it. But the CRD people came here and presented their bike plan here with no costs. And everybody said, that's nice, how much is this going to, they, they've got no costs on it. They do so have costs on it. They well, not, not very well, much. what's been done? They've costed out the but entire what's point. been done, Corey, that's my concern is we're really trying to make this happen. And, and you I know, I, and I think that, I mean, what, what, what Lorna's saying is that they do, we do want community input. I, I, I don't think there's any question we want no, community yeah, input. Absolutely. She's saying we do need community input, but, you know, let's look at the, the information that we have and that we've paid for with, to come up with some good ideas of exactly what is going to help our municipality. And now let's start getting some other community input and saying, you know, like, like they had the little charrettes for Oak Bay High School. Do something like that where you can say, here's what we have. What other ideas do you have? Like, how do you think this is going to work? How do you think this would be? Or what do you think is going to be the top ones, you know, to you? Something like that. Yeah, and I think you can also... I have yeah, no yeah, worries about that. raising expectations. Yeah. So I think and I, I but think... But they went with an idea by that point. That's right. And I that don't see that anybody is going to be insulted that we've taken no. a little bit of time. We've got some ballpark figures. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've decided we'll show them what we, what we think we probably should do as a first bite yeah. on this thing. Yeah. On the understanding that that isn't intended to be the last and only bite. Right. It's just the first bite. And if you think we're biting in the wrong side of the apple, tell us. I think also that... Um, the other, the, the really important um, part, piece that Did we don't want to miss out on is, is we have schools within our area that those kids are going to have a lot of really good input. And I think it really needs to be taken to the schools sure. as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, the kids, the kids come up with some great yeah. ideas. Mm -hmm. So why mm -hmm. wouldn't we go into the school and make a presentation? You know, and so it, would be, it would be a good part of their curriculum as well, right? so, it so to help in that planning process. It sounds to me like with a few lumps along the way, we sort of have a bit of consensus as to what we're going to do. And uh, we're going to get some comments back from Richard and company in a couple of weeks. We'll send it around to everybody. Uh, everybody will have a first cut on what they think would be the first go. Mandy or somebody will, will produce a document on that, send it back. We'll hopefully it'll have a degree of logic to it. Maybe it won't. And then we will have another meeting and wrestle it to the ground. Is that all right? Can I add this one? I think there's a middle ground between presenting. We are the committee, and here are our recommendations. And okay, here is the report, community respond and survey monkey form or whatever. I think if the committee provides some focus by looking at doing what we're doing, mm -hmm. but then presents to the community, perhaps through uh, a seminar setting, perhaps through the media. Um, not just the recommendations, but also uh, uh, the report itself. And say, oh, of here, course. Here, yeah. Here's, yeah. The, oh, of course, yeah. here's yeah. material we've looked at. We would like you to take some time in this in this seminar to go through it too. Of course. Here's what we came up with. See if you agree with that. Or if there's something more yeah. you can come up with. Then no, there's sort of, no. There's, there's sort no of a dialogue happening between the material, yeah. our our recommendations, and their own considerations. There's no question, Steve, that that's what we we're doing. We're not going to say this is all you can look at. We're just going to say we're struggling because we don't have money to do this all in one gulp. And uh, or even a little bite. So um, now, have we, so we'll go ahead with that, Mandy. We're you're, now, Daniel. Do we need any? Do we need to de delay Daniel anymore? So we thank him very much for coming. And uh, thank you guys. And you'll you'll maybe be in touch with Richard about sure, some rough yeah. numbers. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. And uh, I'll try and make I'll try and make sure that we paid your bill. He, he doesn't know. He doesn't that. deal with bills. <laughs> he, has no he has no idea whether he has no idea whether we paid him or not. Let's prioritize which bills we're going to pay. Yeah. 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 Do the small ones first. Yeah. <laughs> He's my kind of guy. You know. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Can I?
one other suggestion that would be, it's, uh, it's, it's a fairly passive one, it would be just on the website where it says, here's the plan, if you have any comments, email, and just put an email address there, right beside it, very simple little line that says, yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. fine. Because then, you know, if people do want to give comments, yeah. it tells them what the, how the, how to do it right there and then, and I don't know who that goes to, but that's just... You'd probably go to Loran and she'd probably end up passing it up for None of the people that phone me seem to be shy at all about telling me what's wrong. I don't understand. <laughs> so, um, just ignoring... The, thank you, sir. Just ignoring the... Uh, thank you, guys. The agenda a bit. Audrey is going to go off and buy an hugely expensive dinner for her husband who has a birthday. Is there anything is there anything is there anything to report on the sixty. Is there anything to report on to Black Hollow? Parking and stuff in the village? Have you uh, well you know it's a, one of those interesting things as you all know because <coughs> that's why it's been going around. So I've talked to a fair number of people in the village. Um, I would say the consensus <laughs> is that at this point in time everyone has their annoyances and there's Everyone will give you their own little bit, but there's no, that I'm hearing, big consensus. Um, I gather that there's a fair amount of opposition to uh, taking the house that was bought and put making it into a parking spot. So I don't know if that's an option. I haven't heard a lot of suggestions. As a matter of fact, I haven't heard any suggestions from anyone of things to improve it. They're happy with the new commissioner, I think. The new commissioner has definitely been a plus because I will say that the, that the biggest part of the complaints I got at the beginning were definitely around the commissioner. I've taken him for several walks and explained that the business, is, business community needs to. What I will say is I think that what's happening right now is we're kind of at close to maximum capacity. And I mean, when the mayor and I walk around and he identified the, you know, places that there could be changes, you know, that'll give us five or six more spots. And I think they're good ideas and, and stuff. But so I do think that we are getting close to a pinnacle. And once we get to that pinnacle, it's going to take time to go over it. But it seems to be hard to get people to, uh, to move and think forward. So that would be the problem that I see. If anyone wants to come and give me some ideas or suggestions, the one that I'm going to put out there at this point is, and actually I'm not, I'm going to have a chat with you and we might not, we'll bring it up later. This isn't the point, the time or the place. But, uh, but so I'm open to hearing things, but it has been interesting that everyone, so you've got all the uh, businesses complaining that they're, uh, Employer, employees are going out every two hours and moving their cars. But when you ask, when I ask them, so what would you like to see? There are no suggestions. So, incidentally, I did tell the mayor that I checked with the the new uh, the bistro, the bistro, and I checked with uh, with the head of the BIA, and I told him to go ahead and get transit to get rid of that bus stop. Yeah. Um, and again, you know, Bart. This is up around the corner. Yeah. The Monterey at one. The first time I had seen any one of that bus stop was last week. I we hadn't seen anyone in years. Never and anybody. Happened to bike it, yeah. And there was a woman waiting. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> She's not going to be happy. She's lost. Did you tell her to move the pharmacy? Yeah, you know, as soon as you move it, it it'll they'll definitely everyone's prepared to uh, create the negative. He's a, he's another person. I mean, everyone's busy. That's part of the problem because yeah. you know he said he wanted to talk to me. I sent him back an email saying, okay, how about one of who's, these times? Who's he? Bart. Oh. No, I had a long chat with him. He didn't even know there was a bus stop there. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Most people don't. Um, yeah. So, okay. and you know, there's other people there that, uh, the other businesses that I'm sure you'll get some uh, feedback, but that's part of life. Okay. So uh, I didn't have the heart to stop and tell her. No. Because <laughs> she was just, stand too long she was just waiting on, on the, uh, you know, on the sign. Maybe she was just leaving on the post. Just at the end of the street. I figured, oh, this I'm could be the last week to do the post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, 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 that red line, it, it goes down the other side of the lane. It, it is four or five spots. Yeah, there. it will cre create, but, but honestly, I believe that we're at a, we're not at a tipping point, but uh, what's going to happen is all of a sudden we're going to be there, and then it's going to blow up. Well, I notice on a Friday night off when the cars are parked all the way down as far as you can go on, on, on granite, right down to the church on both sides, and way down Hampshire. So I agree with you. I think we're getting pretty full. Well, and I think part of that is I bet there's a ton of open spaces that nobody knows about. 
Maybe. Because when, when I walked around, there are actually a lot of spaces that are open that no one realizes are parking spots. Oh. Yeah. So. Okay. You can tell me where they are. Any other, <laughs> quest any other questions for the sure. traffic expert? <laughs> All right. Getting back to the agenda. I passed out this Oak Bay uh, lockup location map, which is covering 500 and 13. 513 uh -huh. sites. Richard, I don't know if you had a chance to look at this or not. I think it was produced by... By your department. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Was it? I thought was it produced by them. I thought Lauren and you... Uh, well, uh, well, we yeah, but what happened is we went out and took the old one, went out, checked it all. I sent it back to engineering, yeah, the work. and they did the work and, and did this. We don't have this kind of capability. You're trying so. to tell me Mary couldn't do that? Well, I don't think so. I don't think on this particular okay. one. All right. Uh, town square update? Well, just before you get that, I, I, I was actually surprised to see the Monterey School 110. So yeah, was I. I. I actually... haven't been there lots of times. I I will ask Lauren again because I think I did ask him to double check that one. I think it's on both sides. And he sides. said it was right because he was surprised. L I, let me double check. I'll see him tomorrow and I'll ask again because it bothered. I, I did ask. It looks like it's sure. way more than before. I, I thought it was a lot, but but I think I think he's I think he said he double checked it. Well, there's going to be nominal capacity because if they install the rack against a wall that has the capacity right there, so if they install it, so you can put bikes in on both sides. Oh, okay. So the I don't know how Lauren did his numbering. <laughs> And that's a problem the city of Victoria is discussing right now about with their bike parking requirements. About how they're actually talking about how they actually want to legislate how people I place the racks so that people don't place the rack like this against the wall because then you lose the whole back side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then talking about forcing people to put like this so you can actually get the full amount of capacity for the rack. Well, it's an impressive figure if it's accurate. But I don't see where there is, where does it show the ones that, like I counted something like. 13 bike spaces, including the ones under the corner of the Municipal Hall, the four or five that the Fairways has by their front They're door. They're all here. They're at well, I thought they were on here, but is I didn't Is that see 19 them. Oak Bay Avenue, Fall Bay to Monterey? Yes. Where is it, Oak Bay? Number, Number 19. 19. Very good, I can take you. Number 19? Number 19, Oak Bay Avenue, has, oh, Fall Bay the, to Monterey. I must have the wrong list. Mine only yeah. has 13 on it. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what list are you <laughs> looking at? <laughs> You're looking at the old one. You've got the old Wait one. Minute. Here's the new one. Wait a minute. Hold the phone. Here's the new one. I'm sorry. <laughs> Number sorry. 19. Yeah. 16 could use more. What about Tom? Well, what, what about the ones around the corner on... Uh, by uh, on the corner on Hampshire, there's two or three. He uh, he included those on the Ope Ave ones. On the, on, under okay. item 19. Those under 14. item 19, he just included them in that one because he well, we talked about it. that number's too low. I, there, there's about 13 well, or 14. Well, I can. I'll there's about 13 or 14 right in front of. I within will 20 feet of Fairways Market. We're there, walking. There's I one at Starbucks. Check. There's one around the corner. There's I'll two check around with the corner. him. Anyway, we're working on that. It's if if you number. see any you think are wrong, let me know because I'll get Lauren and I go walking and we'll go check. Okay. Town Square update. Steve. Well, this has been a very interesting conver oh. conversation um, about, you know, with, around the transportation planning. It sort of dovetails nicely, I think, into, into what we're um, recommend recommending. Just some background first. Uh, originally, we had uh, it was a committee of just you two folks, um, Neil and Nil, working on uh, the Market Square idea, maybe in front of the Municipal Hall. But um, as as we became involved in considering how to do that, what that might look like, it became clear there were more considerations than just looking at the, that um, space. That everything seemed to dovetail into everything else, whether it's the transportation plan, the considerations around parking, uh, issues around biking, just where are public gathering spots in municipality, how can we enhance them? And uh, after having some conversation about what do we do with the with the public square idea, we realized that really all these aspects of the community are interrelated and, and require some sort of uh, sort of bigger perspective, if you like, future-based perspective, in order to help guide um, us as a small committee, but also us as a large committee in deciding how to make decisions. Um, uh, we're discussing right right today around around the transportation plan and how do we decide and how do we prioritize, but we don't really have an overall um, framework of where we're going as, as a community 
um, to help guide us in that. And it seems to me that one way to do that is to is, is to is to um, imagine a way in the future. Uh, um, um, we're saying 2050, just for the sake of argument, and involving uh, a broad range of the community in a sort of ideas form around that, uh, with some guidance um, around around thinking and and, and 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 discussing, so that we can have a sense of what people. Um, Basically, I, I, I think to myself often, what makes Oak Bay so special? You know, why, why, what, what makes this place unique? And how do we not just maintain it, but enhance it and, and strengthen it? And I think that if we had a ideas forum that asked basically that kind of question, I think we could get, come up with a sense of what the community likes about Oak Bay now and what's great about it and what can be enhanced and, and protected, but also what can be uh, for it move forward in various ways. And we don't have that kind of perspective to guide us in making decisions that we're talking about now. And how do we go about doing it? That's sort of what we, what we came up with as a committee. So we went back and met a number of times uh, in various combinations of us over the summer and early fall to try to come up with some sense of how can we manage such a, such a pie in the sky idea and try to make it be a more practical, come up with something specific as well as encourage people to be inspired about, about the future. As you said, people have lots of comments, but where do you get the ideas? You know, how do you get people to come up with ideas? So the challenge is, is just that, to create a future-focused perspective. And the goal, we felt, was to try to inspire the community to envision uh, choices for its own future. So, and and I, we think the solution is to offer a public, inclusive, and collaborative ideas forum uh, around this idea of Oak Bay 2050. We see uh, inviting people from uh, randomly selected citizens, people from the BIA, from the Community Association, and the other members listed here, as well as interested members of the community. We see it as being a whole day um, experience, um, focusing around certain key themes um, and of, of what's important for the community now. Transportation, for example, would be one of them. Uh, green market squares could be market squares. Well, market squares, community squares could, could be another. But also, but there needs to be some consideration about sort of what if scenarios when when uh, corporations make plans for the future, they try to imagine uh, what might happen. What would happen if there was an earthquake? What would happen if there was a um, positive and negative scenarios of various kinds? And then people can better respond to that, if only to make sure those things don't happen, or to make sure they do. You know, if they're positive things. Um, uh, we would see presenting. Um, involving the, 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 this forum in, in reflecting on what is Oak Bay, what makes it uh, unique, uh, and then having people, and, and presenting the themes that are, uh, that are sort of current now, such as transportation, and, and we have ideas for other themes. Um, and then involving, and then allowing the, the members of the, of the group to um, select what themes and scenarios they want to be a part of, and then spend some time with help from uh, facilitators, namely us, to reflect on those themes more deeply, uh, consider some research material, perhaps um, um, presented by the art, us, we as facilitators, perhaps through access to the web that people can <coughs> use, and just um, do their own research uh, live right there in the, in the room. Uh, basically, a deeper brainstorming time with some, with some informative, um, with some information and some, and some structure based on the themes, and then expect each small committee an, an hour or so later to present their ideas that would then be summarized and eventually uh, presented to, to, to we as a committee, that we would then write a report and then present it to council who could then um, you know, decide what to do with that. And, and, and because it's sort of a larger uh, as, um, perspective, it doesn't necessarily touch upon the uh, more immediate um, um, community plan that's going to be happening, but, but will help to, to provide some input to it in a way that I think would be um, um, perhaps inspiring. Uh, the final, and that sort of summarizes what I said on the, on the page. The final section uh, with the cute little picture that I was in that last night is because uh, there was too much space with blank. I didn't want to just find <laughs> something. So you it. thought of a few more things. Yeah. Oh, we'll put the future in, I see. Yeah, we got the future's coming. You better go somewhere. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. See off ramp to the future. Yeah. 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 Cute. I didn't make that. Or maybe I did. No, no, you've seen it a million times, I know. I have it in some of my yes, I know, I know. <laughs> You just type in future <laughs> images in Google, it doesn't yeah. come down. Any case, so, so in, 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 in rough terms, I mean, the day will look something like the uh, framework that, that we presented at the bottom, with I said, overview, uh, a, a group process on what does Oak Bay mean to you, and here are what some of the themes could be, and also a group, a group process as a whole group, what are some of the scenarios and, and having them react, and then teams respond to those scenarios. I mean, it's not, it's not, 
when you put it in those terms, I don't think it's so scary. I, the last time we discussed it was like, how do you take the pie in the sky, blue sky, way up in the air, uh, 2050, what do we, and how do we make that? And I think this, is, this can be done, especially if we involve people from UVic, perhaps, or, or other people who, in the community who are citizens who already have expertise in involving uh, consultative, collaborative uh, processes and get people to come up with ideas. I, I can see how this could dovetail in the transportation plan. If, if, one of the, if one of the themes was active transportation and if one of the members here did their research and, 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 and took our 10 points or whatever and involved some of the members of this forum in, in reflecting upon that, um, that would help to, to guide us in determining what to do with this plan, let alone other things we have considerations for. Now we do have, we did come up with some, some um, ideas for how, what the themes could look like and so on, but we decided not to directly include it because the whole point here is to involve the committee in designing this and then involve the community in, in, in designing it too. So if we just came up with all of these themes, then we'd get involved in discussing should we or should we do, do those themes. It's better, I think, to have the whole group say, yeah, good idea, let's, let's see if we can, from, from my point of view, I, I can see this being a task for the whole committee for the next year of, of, of making this happen in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a powerful and inspiring way for the whole community. I think it could bring the whole um, level of debate on what is obeyed and how do we maintain it, how do we enhance it, but more importantly, how do we make it even better, um, bring, bring it to a different level and, and an exciting level, I would argue, that it could be um, this whole issue of how do we involve the public, this would be a nice way to open that door to, uh, in, in a way that I think we could, could lead all kinds of good cool things myself. So, how's okay. that? Okay, comments, yeah. questions for Sue? Where do you see us going next? Well, I'm responding to this immediate little spiel, that people are uh, found this a legitimate um, idea, then I think it's a question of the committee saying, yes, we would like to go in this direction and then start to the process of, of um, involving some people from UVic, perhaps, looking for citizens who can help us as consultants in doing this. Yes? Before we do that, we need council direction. I was just going to say that. I think we, I think we, we, we can't, uh, we don't okay. have a mandate to go do that. Yeah. But if yeah. the committee wants to go to council and say that we would like, this is a route we'd like to go down for the next year, then we need to make that request. So the answer to your question is if this committee agrees with this direction, then we should find some way to present it to council. I just wonder, uh, you alluded to it briefly, just where this fits in with the OCP update. And, you know, I don't, I'm, Part of I look at this and I, I like the idea. I'm a little worried that we end up running in parallel to any sort of OCP update, and then people get frustrated because they end up putting a lot of ideas in here that never make it into the OCP update document. Uh, I don't know where. It's a very similar process. Exactly. I mean, and City of Victoria did some very interesting things looking at specific things in their OCP update. I don't know if you. I don't know if anyone here attended. I managed to get to a couple of them. Um, the other thing that I look at here. I wonder um, what kind, I mean, aside from the fact that we don't really have a mandate, what kind of costs are we looking at and do we have budget, you know, if we did have the mandate, so. Well, they'd have to give us that, like, is that right, yes. Corey? Yes, <laughs> we'd have to fight for it. I agree with Corey. I think, because I, I keep hearing about through council that they're talking about the OCP and talking about next year, and maybe you're quite right that you're quite right that maybe this is something that could be done in conjunction and council will say you guys do this piece of it mm. but I think you have to be careful because you don't want them whatever it is don't want them going out and doing the same thing get done twice or yeah. we get information they say well I told that group and mm. but I do really like the idea and I think the idea of a single day like a single day forum concentrated you know Windsor Park middle of the so is, is there a way to I mean the cost is an issue. The cost of the day, I don't think, would, would be that much. The no. cost of what to do with the idea as well, it's yeah. in the future. Let me come up with a plan and do it like what we're doing. In the it depends entirely on whether or not we engage any sort of professional um, facilitators. That starts adding your cost up sure. pretty quickly. But I suspect there are people in the community who might be willing to take their expertise in a retirement function or some other way that we could find. If we did this with the Monterey Centre, and look how successful that was. Yeah. If it didn't cost us a penny, um, and uh, we had these three, it came up with these three projects and one of them's been built. It's hard for me to answer the question of how to um, 
connected or not, or or the, or the, t the timeline with with the uh, the, with the plan. I'm not sure what the initials are. I was wondering if it's, I wonder if it's possible for you to, in your own mind, distinguish what this is, distinguish how it's different than the community plan. To me, it sounds like this would be part of a community I, plan I could review. Because this is this is sort of a larger thing, I could see this. Um, the community plan, if I understand it correctly, is more specific. It involves feedback from from the public as well as uh, other so sources. But it's an, but it has a goal, which is to generate something specific for the next five years. Or to amend something that's already there. So since it's, since it's more specific, um, I, I can see uh, if, it, if you just focus on updating it or improving the plan, that's just a pragmatic process. This is a little more um, wider in scope, which I think uh, out of inspiration comes, comes, comes creation. This is the inspiration part. This is trying to, to involve the public and inspire them and take their ideas, and out of that can become a more pragmatic part of designing the plan. Now, I must admit, I, <coughs> I would have difficulty explaining but to I council how it is different mm -hmm. than... than well, I'm not super familiar with how this plan has been developed in the plan. Well, so I'm, not, I'm not exactly clear how is we're going to... Is there an official to procedure that uh, municipalities are bound... Well, uh, I'm sure there's a variety of procedures, but I'm not quite sure how, in the end, council will sit down and decide to review the community well, perhaps plan. Perhaps we should do some research into what the OCP procedures are. are well, they, they, they so yeah. the last time when they did it, they did surveys, they did public consultation, they did public meetings. There was a lot of, lot of input yeah. from was this done the investigation of the people who are preparing the OCP, or was it done because provincial legislation says this is the way oh, you go? No, I think it's it was the municipality yeah. I, that wanted to to have it done. I don't think it came from at that time. I don't think it did, and this time I don't think it's being driven from. Well, I the think the answer was, as I recall it, was we agreed that we would do it, and yeah. we, we agreed, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, that we would uh, probably before the end of the year, depending on which ones of us are around, we would. Uh, you know, look at developing a plan and deciding if we need a consultant and, and getting some of that stuff behind us so we'd have sort of a number to put in the budget. That was my recollection. It seems to me the timing would be really good. We, we're going to get all these ideas in. Um, and when we eventually the mm -hmm. consultant to prepare the OCP is... Nice basket. Thing, um, he or she or they would have all this information already there and they could decide whether they need more or... My idea would be we, we as a, ca a committee that we're sort of interested in doing this, and then council says, well, if you guys are volunteering to organize this part of it, that, that, that's great. That'll give us a basket of ideas with which we can use to do the other steps we're going to be involved in. But I don't know how the whole process works. And I think if the, oh yeah, and I suspect if you're going to get into the OCP, I would suspect Mark and Moran would have to be yeah. heavily involved in that. Yeah. Can I say Mark and Moran, the CEO and the, yeah. the, the oh clerk, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I don't involve them, yeah. And I still have difficulty distinguishing how this wouldn't normally just be a part of the OCP review. Well, I, I think, think it has a couple of different aspects to it. Well, there are, but yeah, you could, it would be things. easily included in the OCP. It could very, yeah. very well be easily included in and the, and the augments. And the difficulty is if you ask OCP. people to consult once or twice, they're pledged, but uh, please, but if you ask them, 14 times to do the same thing, they're getting I think it goes in conjunction with it. Yeah, how about another approach is to say, okay, we would, we would like something like this included oh, with this. the, and, also, and, as, and as a committee, we would be willing to take this piece on and work with municipal administrative staff to make this piece happen. I could explain and do it, that. Yeah. And, and do it that way. And, and so even though it's bigger than the OCP, we get some of the stuff we want, but That's maybe right. working with Mark and Loran, we can get the stuff they need in there as well. And we might, and they'll probably have a consultant that can guide yeah, us, right. but maybe if we're willing to do this, it'll cost the municipality less. Yeah. Everybody would. Roy, you're bursting That's to tell us. Well, I was news. just going to say, like, the, the OCP, I mean, itself, uh, it, it mm -hmm. would include the transportation plan, mm -hmm. you know. No. Uh, it doesn't necessarily right now. It has some transportation aspects to it, but with any review uh, of the current OCP, I'm sure that this transportation plan is going to be incorporated in 
okay. in, in some in some manner, if not completely. So, yes. so Steve, is that between Steve and Mandy? Is that something that you could rewrite to to follow what Lorna just said? She made good notes of what she said. Well, this this is really kind of it can be the kind of the precursor uh, to getting people thinking about the future. Yeah. Uh, and establishing um, uh, values, perhaps, as you're talking about, or the, the vision, uh, which then uh, the OCP then can build on in specifics, right? Uh, so we've heard from the public that this is what they see as a long-term vision. How do we then put that into a five-year plan or a ten-year plan? Uh, that'll be a challenge. But I, so I, I think this could generate that initial energy, that initial uh, open the mind and just uh, uh, blue sky, is that what you call it, Steve? Yeah. So uh, th but this we need could to be, be able a conjunction to or in series, I think. You know? So then you get, you, you get the big picture, then you move into the technical. Because part, part of the stuff that, you know, have to be challenged is, you know, for the OCP is, well, there's a lot of technical stuff, right, that has uh -huh. to be in. Uh, this so. is the zoom out. But then the, the OCP is to zoom in. Well, I, I see it as a, I see it as a, a, a second, an added section within the OCP mm -hmm. okay. at the very end. You know, book eight, 2050. At the very end. But, well, maybe not created at the very end, though. Oh, no, 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 I mean, like, a, as part of the OCP. Right. It, it's actually oh, I see, included. in the document. The, in, in, the in the document, document. <laughs> sorry, yes. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. oh, no, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in so the actual Steve, document, so right, that it's included right. within the document. If you could right. kind of redefine this along the lines of what Lorna said, that we would be saying to, uh, saying to council, this is something the committee wants to address. We understand that it it sort of a little bit walks like a community plan review, talks like a community plan review, but and probably a, much of it will be included in the review of the community plan, but the committee is prepared to take on that piece that and, piece. and, work and with if you're acceptable. Administration staff, municipal yeah. administration yeah. staff. It's really important that Loran and Mark are included. Yeah. In so if you were to do that document, <laughs> then I can go over uh, with Loran and, and uh, and mark and say, okay, is this something that is makes sense or doesn't make sense? Like make bring it to them, you mean? Pardon? Bring it to them? Well, yeah, I, you and I or well, I yeah, whatever okay, we'll bring it to. Them. Yeah, okay. Right, but so I mentioned at another meeting, and I don't know if it's worthwhile to, to pursue. But when I was working out in the West Shore, Colwood and Langford together were doing their com uh, official community plan, and they incorporated a lot of this, which is something that I hadn't seen before, and a lot of groups, and so a lot of different topics got, you know, in. in engaged like recreation and all you know some of the things that you're talking about it was really quite good and they they did hire an outside consultant team but it may be worthwhile to you know to, to ask like did the were they, were they happy with the results of the process mm -hmm. but i know from as a staff person i was quite impressed when i saw the individuals got invited to different segments and you know different key uh, <coughs> i think it was incorporating was this, this. Yeah, well if you could, could talk to call what they were was call with langford did it together but I work for Westshore Parks and Recreation, so then I got involved. I got invited as a sort of like the charrette. Yeah. It, it was, and it was very well done. And they, they mm. talked about all the different issues, and 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 different people got invited to different things, and some people got invited to multiple things. Yeah. And it it was it was really you know it was ambitious, but I think they really uh, got to got, everyone got an opportunity, mm. and uh, it was quite visioning. I thought. So the city of Victoria is doing, and you're saying that they just finished with there, and they did a lot of this work as part of their OCP update. It's like the modern so way, I yeah. think. Yeah, we put twenty thousand uh, aside. I think it's fifteen or twenty thousand aside in our bud current budget in order to hire a consultant who would uh, start to plan, <laughs> create that plan, and I think <coughs> it would be the consultant who would look at innovative uh, ways to engage. To do that, and then I think that's something that this committee could work with, uh, and Steve could work with our consultant to come up with with the best way to reach out, and of course, Loran and, uh, and Roy and uh, and Mark would have to be as really intimately involved because it has a huge yeah. implication, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Or when you zoom down, mm -hmm. twenty thousand is going to be low. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, I think that's just the, uh, the, the, the upfront money to tell us what a process would like, you know, probably also the estimate. The room. <laughs> yeah. so, they start talking, the numbers go up. Okay. So exactly. basically, you would like me to re, re or the, let's say the little the committee, so can we rework the document to be able to put it in the so context of the community plan? And, uh, a portion, yeah. So and the, move it through yeah. and, and, just, and present it to Lorraine and Mark in order to see if that fits with. Yeah, that. maybe you and I could take it there and just and, and go over to those two, and then we could take it to council and, and say this just just what we've been talking about here. So, uh, okay. And okay. So is the, is, is the committee out on, as a whole sort of generally supportive of the idea? And, and I think so. I haven't heard anybody taking their head too hard the other way. Okay. Lorraine, uh, you're not yeah. taking your head. No, no, no. Okay. All right. So the next item, um, the Oceanside Nature Concept, I, I did go with, uh, with Lauren and Christopher to look at a second alternate site over by that little island. What's the name of the little island? The, uh, Where the chairs are. The one place that Christopher mm -hmm. puts all his old chairs out on. And uh, I think that both Christopher and I said this is, this is just going to be a place where drug addicts come to shoot up and people come to sleep and I just don't think it's um, I just didn't think it was going to work and neither, none of us did so uh, so we've stuck with the same location on uh, on Radcliffe we have the five thousand dollars we talked about you were guaranteeing us the money from not guaranteeing uh, anything but uh, the road from somewhere and we're still now, holding our breath so. on that and um, and uh, Lauren is now talking to all the, uh, or, or a number of the neighbors on Radcliffe to make sure that they're, uh, they understand what we're doing. There's uh, at least one house has changed hands. And then uh, presumably we'll get, uh, and then we're also talking to somebody at the university about. Jock is. Jock is, yeah, the guy that brought it forward to start with. So I think that's sort of underway. Uh, the uh, next item was, I don't know whether anything has happened on the accessibility study because you've been yeah, no. roaming around Panama and other... In a way, uh, nothing has happened, but we did have a meeting between me leaving and, and our last TIC, and um, what we've decided to do is two more um, actual studies, uh, a hearing impaired and one other, that um, Doug Nutting is going to organize, but he, we just agreed that we do it after I got back. Okay. So we're going to do two more studies, then we'll finalize that uh, uh, draft report which I presented last time. Okay. And uh, uh, there were a number of comments from the m committee members about that report, so it will be modified to some extent. Okay. Um, and I'll come and report properly next time. Okay. Thank you very much. Under new business, we've got the Sea of Lights. Did we get a letter yes. from the Yacht Club? Yes, yes we did. So what we need to do, uh, I'm trying to remember. We, we, well, we need to have a recommendation. So just to fill everyone in, so Sea of Lights is the, the Christmas boat parade. They'll be um, coming by Willows Beach on December 2nd. And they like to have a, um, a bonfire there, and they need a permit. In order to get the permit, it needs to be approved as a municipal uh, event. So this, this committee could recommend to council that the portion of the Sea Lights event that, that takes place on Willows Beach um, be approved as a municipal event. And I think that allows us to have insurance coverage and a whole bunch of other things. Co I'll make that motion. It's been moved, seconded. Any other discussion? Call the question, all in favor? Contrary, carried. Okay. Sorry, you second? Um, Lorna. Lorna. Thank you. I think Nels and Lorna, it was a tie. Oh, you didn't give Nels. So just going through uh, members' updates. I think, uh, just for your information, we have uh, we have about uh, eighty nine hundred dollars on committed, uh, setting aside two thousand dollars for the Red Cliff Lane thing. So we're we're flush, and we need to maybe look at a couple of projects. Uh, that was really all I had to say. Is there any other comments, Nels? Uh, Hazel? Yeah, no? thanks. Janet? Uh, <coughs> Steve, you've, you've covered Good everything. Uh, Corey? Uh, Neil? Audrey has left. 
Roy, it's up to you to wind up this meeting with some learned comment. Um, I'm going to <laughs> <laughs> what more could I ask? There is the uh, so for those uh, who remember, there is the uh, the streetcar the streetcar presentation at, uh, at oh yeah, that's at something uh, streetcar. I thought it was light rapid transit. <laughs> no, no, it's, uh, John, John, I think those were heavy rapid transit. Will you address what the camera's all about? What, Pardon? What's going on with the camera? This gentleman is, uh, he's doing his own video, and it's on, he puts, has a website called, what is it? Modern Democracy.ca. Oh, yeah.